Okay, so if we know about 20% of the time when it comes to infertility, the male factor is at play, we should definitely talk about that. Hi there, I'm Dr. Jolene Brighton. I'm a hormone doc and I'm also a 41 year old woman trying to get pregnant right now. You can follow my journey in this playlist and we're gonna be talking about supplements for male fertility, specifically supporting those sperm. And this video is gonna be all about what my husband's taking. I have a whole video about what I've been taking for supplements to support egg quality. So I definitely encourage you to go back and watch that. But this one's gonna be all about what my husband's taking. And remember, what's true for us may not be true for you. So always talk to your doctor to make sure that it's the best decision to start a supplement protocol. I personally have not been diagnosed with infertility. In my journey, you'll see we were trying to conceive, we've been able to get pregnant, but what is, what is the definition of infertility? And in fact, it's not just a definition, it's a medical diagnosis. The diagnosis of infertility is made when there have been 12 months of having unprotected sex, trying to make a baby, and you've been unsuccessful. And so if you've reached that 12 month mark, you'll get the diagnosis of infertility, but there's so much you can do before then. And I do wanna say that depending on your age, like if you're over 35 like me, if it's been six months, it's a good time to meet with a reproductive endocrinologist, someone who specializes in fertility cases, just to make sure that there's not some simple fix there. Cause sometimes there is a really simple fix or a really simple tweak like thyroid medication, which I have a video about, that can nickel the difference in your fertility journey. By the way, I'm sweating like crazy right now because we recently went through a hurricane. I have no power. And so I'm using my battery operated <laughs> camera. Uh, well, I can't work and do other things. I'm like, let's make some videos. By the way, you're gonna hear a dog bark because I have to have the windows open because I am perspiring friends. When it comes to sperm, there are three really important things that we need. Number one is we need to have enough of them and that's the concentration. Number two is they need to be moving in the right direction. So once the sperm is deposited, it needs to make its way through the uterine cavity, through the fallopian tubes up to meet that egg. So that is where fertilization is gonna take place. So if they're not swimming in the right direction, that's gonna be problematic. And that's referred to as motility. And the third thing is they have to be the right shape or morphology is what the tests will say. They need to be the right shape to be able to do their job. As we talked about with egg cells being really vulnerable to free radicals, or in other words, oxidative stress, things in the environment that come in and rip apart cells and they're super bad news. Egg cells are vulnerable, which is why we're gonna do all those antioxidants like I talked about in the other video about fertility supplements, but sperm cells are also really vulnerable and they need those antioxidants as well. We're definitely gonna talk about supplements. And if you wanna jump there, I totally feel you on that, but it's very, very important for me to say that your nutrition is equally, if not more important than just taking supplements. So I would be very remiss if I didn't share with you that my husband is eating five or more servings of vegetables a day, and then usually a serving or two of fruit. So yeah, that's like seven servings of produce a day, which might sound like a lot. You at least wanna be aiming for five, maybe three to four servings of vegetables and one to two servings of fruit in a day. But we eat primarily plant-based, we still eat animal protein, okay? Don't come for me in the comments. This is me being honest with you, but it is primarily plant-based in that every meal we are trying to include as much produce as possible. And that's important because the fruits and the vegetables that we intake, they're not only going to provide us with antioxidants, but they're also going to be giving us all kinds of other things like vitamins and minerals and supporting the microbiome, which is really important. Your microbiome, your gut health, and the integrity of your gut, I mean, that influences how you're actually able to absorb and utilize nutrients and also eliminate environmental toxins and things in the environment that may be coming in that are certainly not good for fertility. So there's the nutrition component. And by the way, I have a link in the notes below 
for a meal plan and recipe guide. Yes, it talks about how this is all for women. I also have my husband follow this and actually I just encourage people to have their whole family follow it because it's like so much easier, but it's totally free. Go ahead and grab it if you are looking for a starting place. Okay, so there's diet. We also have to talk about the fact that there are things that are considered dietary because they go in our mouth, but they're not so great. And number one is alcohol. So we, we gotta just say like the, the elephant in the room is that alcohol is not good for anyone's fertility. Male, female parts does not matter. The alcohol does not go well, does not mix well with those parts, okay? So whether it's sperm or whether it's egg, alcohol is not going to do you any favors. In addition to that, consuming things like cannabis can be problematic for fertility. So we definitely wanna make sure that we're cutting that out. And then overall, something very beneficial for fertility is exercise. So it can be problematic with men in terms of their testosterone levels. Certainly if they're taking testosterone replacement therapy as a board certified naturopathic endocrinologist, I'm like, that's a no, no, sir. If we want those sperm cells to be at their best and for us to have enough of them. So instead we want to look at optimizing testosterone. And one way we can do that is through exercise, strength training, making sure that we're keeping inflammation low. So inflammation, it activates something called aromatase. It's an enzyme. It takes testosterone, pushes it into estrogen, and that's, that's no good for no one. And then you get this low testosterone symptoms that nobody likes. And that may look like low libido, which is what everybody thinks of, but it may look like feeling sad, unmotivated, weepy, and having trouble with your muscle mass, like gaining muscle mass or feeling like you're losing your muscle integrity or endurance. What about the heat? Okay, I really wish at this point that I put my hair up because and sweat rolling down my back. And um, if you are a gentleman or you have male genitalia, um, yeah, you got to keep things cool down there. And that's just to say, like, you don't have to like put it on ice, so to speak. Um, but we just do want to be aware of how much heat is being generated. How much are we keeping the testicles close to the body and just being mindful of that? I should have brought a fan. Whew. So we don't have like a ton of studies about supplements and sperm cells or fertility. And so I do want to speak to the fact that we could use more data, but there has been some data showing that when men take these specific things, that it does improve the number of live births. So that is more pregnancies, more babies in this world. So number one, and if you remember this from my video about what I'm taking is CoQ10. And you better believe my husband is on CoQ10. He's taking that for sure. Number two is vitamin E. Number three is a multivitamin. And number four is L-carnitine. And these are not gonna be any stranger to you if you've seen my other video. Um, and the nice thing is, is this means that like you both can just take the same supplements. And we certainly do in my house when it comes to the CoQ10 and the L-carnitine, we are both taking those. But there's additional things that he's taking. So for instance, vitamin C. He's taking about 2,000 to 4,000 milligrams a day. You take that all at once, you're definitely gonna poop your pants, so just be mindful of that. But he's taking it in divided doses to increase his antioxidant capacity. Again, I just wanna say, I'm sharing with you what he is doing, and I would hate for you to do this instead of seeing a doctor, because if you have something else going on, there could be a really simple fix or there might be something big and it's worth catching. So just as a reminder, please talk to your provider um, and make sure that you're getting worked up. And just because he's taking vitamin C doesn't mean he's not also eating vitamin C rich food. So making sure that he's getting bell peppers in. Did you think oranges? You probably thought oranges. Those do have vitamin C. So most citrus fruit is gonna have vitamin C and then bell peppers are actually an excellent source as well. For the CoQ10 that I mentioned already, he's taking at least 400 milligrams a day. That's really what we aim for. Um, sometimes it's 200 milligrams, so I just want to be honest about that, that he's not so perfect about his supplements. He's also taking NAC or N-acetylcysteine. Now, N-acetylcysteine is a precursor to glutathione, and glutathione is a majorly 
awesome antioxidant in the body. And so he's taking this as a precursor just to support his overall antioxidant capacity. And again, that's what these supplements are doing. They're supporting on top of already the best nutrition, the best lifestyle, the best foot that we can put forward. They're supporting the body in what it does best. So we've mentioned the L-carnitine. He's also taking alpha lipoic acid and then omega-3 fatty acids. And I actually didn't mention omega-3 in my video when I talked about fertility supplements. It honestly was like an oversight because I just take 1,500 to 3,000 milligrams, 1,500 milligrams to 3,000 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids every day. Um, so didn't think of it anything special in terms of fertility, but it certainly is and it can be beneficial. And with omega-3 fatty acids, those can be beneficial as well to sperm quality and health. And you can also find them in walnuts, chia seeds, flax seeds, and cold water fish. So like salmon or sardine. The way I mentioned, a multivitamin can be helpful, most likely because it contains things like zinc, vitamin E, folate, vitamin B12, all of these things. I mean, they're helpful for so many things, right? But they're certainly helpful for the male fertility factor. He's also leveraging adaptogenic herbs to support his adrenal health. One key one is rhodiola. And rhodiola has a bit of research in showing its ability to support motility. That is how those swimmers swim. Now, if you missed my previous video about when to do to the deed, I want you to go and watch that and just remind everybody that semen quality tends to be best when you give it a couple of days in between, like a couple of days to regenerate things. So rather than trying to hit it every single day, if you're trying to get pregnant, really try to time that so you're giving yourself a couple days rest, a couple days off um, between sessions, and that can really help improve your semen quality as well. All right, so let me know, was this helpful for you? Did you learn anything? Have you been trying any of these things? What have you found to be successful? I would love to know all of this in the comments. If you saw my other video, or in my, in my two week wait, um, I will keep you updated. I hope it's good news. I really hope it's good news. Either way, thank you for being here. It is always a pleasure to educate you and um, have you along for the journey.